Writing a research proposal is an integral part of doing research. Students submit a proposal in order to get their research project approved. However, writing your proposal is not just a box you have to tick. It helps you clarify and refine your topic, which will be invaluable when deciding how best to proceed. You may at first feel that doing research is like delving into the unknown. If you do, you're not alone. This quote, attributed to Einstein, if we knew what it was we were doing, it would not be called research, would it? Captures the uncertainty most of us feel at the beginning of a new research project. You may think, why do I need to write a proposal? Why can't I just get on with my research? Well, there are a number of good reasons for both you and your supervisor. Primarily, writing your proposal will help you get clear about what you're actually going to research. It will help you gauge if your project is worthwhile doing and if it's possible to complete within the time and other constraints you have. And it will give you the opportunity to think about how you're going to collect your data. For your supervisors, your proposal will help them decide a number of things. For example, whether your project is innovative enough for your degree type, whether you'll have enough time to complete your project within the constraints of your particular word limit, whether your methodology is suitable, and whether the resources you need are available. An important thing to remember while writing your proposal is that you need to persuade whoever is reading it that your research proposal is worthwhile and doable. So make sure your proposal clearly explains what your research question is, why your research is important or significant, how you intend to address your research question, what your proposed methodology is, and how your research can be completed within the time frame of your degree. Remember, writing a research proposal is a process. You will accumulate knowledge gradually as you read and discuss the topic with fellow students and your supervisor. If you can, choose an area that interests you. This may not be an option for you because many students, particularly those in the sciences, are given a topic to research. But if you do have a chance to choose your own research topic, find some aspect that interests you and then read widely about that topic. As you read, identify a specific topic or problem that other researchers have mentioned needs further investigation, what we call a gap in the research. Discuss your idea with friends and your supervisor. Keep reading. As you read, keep refining or narrowing your topic. Finally, make a decision about your research focus and stick with it. Try not to chop and change, even when things get a bit tough. Having decided on your main focus, have a go at constructing an aim and a hypothesis. It's useful to distinguish between the two. As you can see here, we have two statements. One is an aim, says what you want to basically find out. And the second one is a hypothesis. It's been further refined. So looking at these two examples, the first one, to investigate the relationship between national development and the availability of household energy, and the second one which says development in X country depends on the adequate provision of household energy supplies. Now there's a difference between these two. The second one is a hypothesis. It's a proposition to be tested by your research. Whereas the first one is just more of a general aim. But some disciplines work more with a research question than a, than a hypothesis per se. Again, it's useful to distinguish between the two. Here in this example, the aim to find out if the amount of study students do affects their academic performance. If you're going to turn that into a research question, it might look like this. How does the amount of study students do affect their academic performance? The same research topic could have the following hypothesis if you wanted to make a hypothesis. Here we take hypothesis to mean a statement suggesting a causal relationship between concepts and ideas. So you've got the amount of study plus academic performance. So the hypothesis here is the more a student studies, the better the student's academic performance. To find out more, visit the Study Smarter website, brought to you by UWA Student Services. Thank you.